There we go. You got it? Yep. Okay, so we're now, we're now recording. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go a little report out on what we did for the morning. We got different people assigned. So Ginny, you were gonna talk about our little impromptu networking exercise. So three minutes or less, go. Okay. Um, so we made this list. Um, what we just we did individually was we said, what do we want to get out of the conference? And then we also said, what would we be able to give or provide? Um, so this list is just everything. It's not separated into either of those categories. Um, connecting with other people. Um, that's something that we all want to do here. Understand industry, the customer, um, the needs, and the people that um, are hired. And why lean training? Rework. So why do we have to keep training? So what is happening with the original training? Why is it something that has to happen constantly? Quality at the source, same thing. So for training in lean, um, how can we focus on lean concepts? <laughs> so using lean to teach lean, that's just the message here for these three. Um, effective classroom methods. So what's being done now and where are we going? What does the future look like in the classroom um, specifically for teaching lean? Um, using wrong terminology and teaching wrong ways. So uh, maybe we need to have some type of curriculum, um, I guess we use the word alliance, or some type of structure. Or that some we, sort of best practices. Best practices that we all use to teach. And strategies for leadership versus um, operations. And so how can we merge these? And then focus on tools, not systems, and not culture, but I think we should focus on culture. I don't know if it's, I don't think well, it's not yeah. culture. I think that <laughs> it should say culture here, actually, get rid of that. Um, theoretical versus practical. So, uh, you know, obviously we need to give practical experiences to the theories that we want to teach in lean. Collaborate with local businesses, work too close with um, industry, wrong people. So just making sure that when you are working in industry that we're I guess on the same page and we're you know working together and collaborating teaching each other um, that came up a couple times so far deliver the 30-year promise what's the the decouple I don't understand that last bullet yes somebody want to explain that since we're on, on your board that's the who uh, brought it up meaning that you know Shingo who's uh, came to this country in the late 80s first time last time in 1990 and uh, I remember those days, they were very exciting. We were trying to figure out what's going on, huge ideas coming in. And then now we're left with 15 people from all the United States coming to say we're interested in teaching lean. It's not in the textbooks. Business leaders aren't generally using it. Government leaders aren't even aware of it. How did we end up here? What's been the decouple? Because the ideas themselves are good. Okay. All right, anybody else have any sort of input? So just sort of, the, sort of why we're here, what's in it for me? What we came to you know, spy on what we did. Yeah. All right. So thank you, Jenny. Let's give her a hand. All right. So the, the next piece was the fishbowl. All right. So who said they were going to talk to uh, explain the fishbowl for us? Wes, you're going to do the fishbowl. So move yeah. back there. Okay, so the visual exercise that, um, that Eric set up, we had um, five people, six people jump into the middle um, and basically just had focused conversations with questions thrown in, into the bowl. I guess you'd call it the food for the fish, maybe. Um, so we had a sprinkling of food uh, into, um, into that discussion and basically it was an uh, observation um, exercise and we had two scribes um, that were charged with the absolutely impossible task of trying to capture all of that stuff. Um, but if you look up here, you can see we have five, almost five full sheets of things that were discussed um, anywhere from um, what does it actually, you know, what does it actually mean to teach lean? Um, like when we say like we want to teach lean, what are we teaching? Are we teaching what lean is, how lean functions, why, all of the above. Um, we talked about connecting it to the new generation that's coming in, uh, teaching lean in a diverse workplace. Uh, and then also uh, the, there was a lot of discussion about standards of like, what, uh, you know, should we standardize across the board, what's taught. Um, and then we 
did a voting exercise where we tried to pick out the high points um, and voted on the ones that we wanted to actually try and solve for, um, which we selected, um, and that will be gone over in the next <laughs> section. Good. Segways are hard. All right. Um, any additions to what uh, Wes had to say about that? Some that visualize it better? Any, any testimonials from the finish, or uh, concerns about that? All right. Let's give Wes a hand. All right, so now we're going to switch over and uh, hear a little bit about uh, how you sort of focused in from the fishbowl exercise. So, Dan? Hi, yeah, my name is Dan Troy. Um, we came up with what we thought were, were four essential uh, lean learning topics, um, and then we broke it down in terms of what, so what, and now what. And then were change management uh, was, was number one, and we, we, we felt that the, from, a, from an education standpoint, that Lean did not focus on uh, focus enough, enough on uh, change management. And then when we went to, to the practitioners to actually implement lean ideas and thinking that the change management piece was always kind of missing, so that became more of a focus. Um, so build, building the, uh, the process and the, uh, the curriculum to include change management uh, was, was definitely important. Uh, next one was, uh, old world or uh, old lean into new lean, um, and what what that new world view of lean looks like. Uh, what are what are the um, the basic tenets of lean that need to be preserved and, and carried forward, and then what are some of the some of the methodologies or the different ways that the lean teaching can evolve and, and to make it applicable to the next generation future. And then. The, uh, the, the third one was lack of industry engagement and practical problem solving. Um, so what uh, the piece of that was is the, the capacity is limited uh, from, from an educational standpoint in terms of, of kind of on-the-job on training uh, to be able to get out there and, and roll up your sleeves and get your, get your nose in it. Um, and then the, the now what is identifying and selecting coaches and providing training and standardized uh, work for, for coaching students. So developing that partnership. And then the fourth is the, uh, the lean and diversity. And uh, um, I think one of the most interesting questions about that were, were, you know, what are the different types of diversity and the different types of diversity to focus on that actually uh, make for a, a more um, engaging and a more uh, relative uh, aspect of, of lean teaching. So the, the what challenge is, um, what is the best method to deliver lean um, the, so to a diverse classroom, to a diverse workforce and so forth? And why is that important is because we have to have uh, a common understanding of what lean is in the midst of all this diversity. So there, there's, some, there's some tension between those, those two uh, dichotomies there. Um, and then the now what is the, uh, the strategy moving forward? You know, how do we incorporate the basic tenets of lean, uh, and it, it, it ties into the old and new. How do we incorporate the, the basic tenets of lean and, and um, um, integrate that into a diverse uh, audience? Good. Any, any, yeah, any, any other things we sort of missed on that for the high part? Okay. Well, let's give Dan a hand. Thank you. So, anybody want to uh, time me just so we make sure that I'm not. I know, Ken, you'd be right on that. Right? So three minutes here. Yeah, so the, um, the last thing that we did sort of to wrap up the morning is we're interested in what is the minimum specification to be successful teaching lean in higher education. So we've been, we've brainstormed sort of the maximum list of all the things that we could thought we needed to do. And then we tried to test each idea against if we, if we didn't do this thing, do we still have a, a large chance or a high percentage chance of being successful? All right, because we want we want a small list, can't do 100 things, but what are the top 10 or top seven or top 12 or whatever things you have to do to be successful? And we started working through that, that maximum list. We hadn't finished the work, but some of the things we had sort of come up with was the idea of, of making sure for your 
individual university situation that you have good strategic fit and strategic alignment. You know that you know if it's important to get the dean's buy-in, you get the dean's buy-in. If it's not important, then you know you make sure that you're doing it for the curriculum community, or you know you've got faculty buy-in from your colleagues. Whatever that is in your particular situation, make sure you have good fit. We want to make sure that we relate to and engage students is minimum. We've got to do that well. And we thought problem solving had to be a critical piece for um, teaching lean. So if we, if we miss a problem solving piece, um, we're not doing our job. There's got to be an experiential piece in this um, beyond just card playing cards too. You know, maybe uh, tie in with industry and, and things like that where, where students can, um, you know, hit the road running when they get they get out of here. Um, you know, we picked up on that idea of how important soft skills and change management is to doing that. Maybe that's something we've missed a little bit as lean educators. We need to make sure that's incorporated and get a tie in there. Um, we need to teach about failure, right? And the ability to uh, fail, um, fail forward, fail without um, embarrassment, you know, because the learning experience for our students. Or maybe tying that into problem solving. And then, you know, we need to give them the basic principles of lean. And not only, you know, they need to know sort of the, the why, how, and what of those principles, all right, going forward. So we've got another uh, page or so of, of things to sort of go through and check out, but we're building that minimum specification. So that's where I think we're at, you know, at this minute in the uh, conference. That's the one morning worth of work. I want to give you guys a big hand for all the, all the work you've done. It sort of feels like progress. You know, I'm feeling like I understand things a little bit more and a little bit more insight. Um, any comments or uh, for the folks in here? And then I'm going to turn it over and ask the, the folks online if they've got any comments or things they want to insert into our discussion. Okay, so um, Ashley and VJ, you got uh, you got anything you want to add or, or sort of talk about to what we've got in here? Um, we know we're going to be showing up at Utah State next year, so VJ, you want to you know prime us with? Uh... Yeah, so you know one one of the things that that occurs to, that could be helpful is just and and I think this is for, for down the road is starting to put this all together. There needs to be a way to. Uh, put all of this in one place where people who might want to use it know what resources, what tools are out there. Uh, because I think, you know, one of the challenges is sometimes, you know, you know, if we want faculty who are not already teaching some of these concepts, lean concepts, they don't always know where to start. And I think, you know, one of the things that this group may need to work towards is creating some sort of repository. I know, I know you already have some of that in place, but thinking about how that can be leveraged for um, maximum inputs. Good, thank you. Thanks for that, VJ. Ashley, do you have any kind of uh, insights or things that you would like to see lean educators be looking at? Yeah, I, I think the um, some of the support that's needed to allow people to fail forward and, and those sorts of things require a little bit of leadership training and maybe factoring in some elements of leadership training into the basic lean training. So is that, is that lead leadership training for the, the students or for leadership at the universities? Um, I, I think it could probably be addressed from both directions. And so there's sponsor type training, which would be really helpful to support the students, but also for the students to understand, be able to recognize what type of sponsorship they have and then be able to adjust based on, um, you know, how to manage up based on where their sponsor's at. Yeah, manage up. Eric, can I add just one, uh, one comment? Oh, sure, go ahead. Um, at some point, you know, we, we got the issue of some folks who are just wanting to bring some of these ideas in for the first time at a, at a fairly low level. We may have some folks who are thinking about designing, delivering entire classes. And then we have program level. Um, and, and I know, so I, I like what you said earlier on about sort of identifying what needs to be there. You know, you start with your ideal state, then you can sort of work back from there to say, okay, you know, how do we prioritize? 
So I, I would hope that part of the conversation here really looks at the fact that there are multiple sets of constituents and we need to make sure that we are doing something that uh, resonates with some of those different groups because it's not one group, it's, it's, it's multiple groups. So uh, address uh, address all these sort of constituencies. Right? Okay, good. So um, let's see. So we've got one other phone number online. Is that a is that an other person that wants to introduce themselves? So phone number person. So ending in nine one one five. Yeah, Eric, that's me and Thomas Sortino. Yeah, hey, Thomas, how you doing? I'm good. I'm very jealous of everybody that's in the room making this happen. <laughs> okay. So, so Thomas, did you, um, are you able to sort of see our screen and, you know, you heard our report out? Do you have any kind of input for us? Well, I'm phone only, but I did hear, I think, most of the majority of the discussion. I think you guys are headed very much in the right direction, asking a lot of the very important questions that need to be clarified uh, to help provide for a, a, a successful educational program. Um, largely, what is it we're trying to teach? Um, so that, that's a good start. Um, definitely uh, need a lot more of that clarity uh, because there are disparate, uh, as one of the speakers pointed out, you know, old lean versus new lean. You know, what really are we going after here uh, are we trying to focus primarily on the traditional Toyota methodology or on the new morphed uh, Lean Six Sigma type models? Because they are different. Uh, I also support very much the leadership aspects and the soft skills. Um, that's something that I picked up uh, very much along the way, kind of school of hard knocks. So I think it would be good to at least introduce the concepts. Um, so yeah. Definitely head in the right, right direction, asking a lot of the right questions. Um, hopefully, I can twist my boss's arm and join you tomorrow. But if not, uh, keep up the good work. All right. Yeah, Thomas, if you can, uh, if you can join us, we'd, we'd love to have you. All right. So thank, thank you for that input. Um, just for folks, so Thomas is a, um, I'm just going to say, lead manager up in uh, Paso Robles. So, uh, so he's kind of a local guy for us, part of our. Um, local lean community here. Anything else anybody needs to, to go on the record with? We're good. All right, everybody else wants lunch and we can kind of move on to the, those, those important things. Okay, so um, thank you to our, our online participants. Thanks for, uh, thanks for being there. Uh, VJ, we look forward to coming to Utah State next summer. So um, I, we're, we're trying to set the bar as high as we can here. So, um, so you're going to. No gonna, pressure. No pressure. No pressure. Okay. All right. So, thank you all. If you could join us tomorrow, that would be great. Um, but I really appreciate your calling in. It added a nice dimension to this group here. So. Good. Great work. Thanks so much, everyone. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. Take care. Um, let's go ahead and break for lunch at this point. We need to be back uh, on our game by 1 30. Right. So, 1 30 is the plan. Hopefully, yeah, no. Boy, that sounds like a pretty good class. Okay. I'm going to maybe design one of those or take that. Um, and then we had tangible culture was, what was that one? That was Wes. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, so you had the boxes and the culture and like local people versus outside people and things. So that was a really useful way to maybe practicalize culture, right? Which was one of the, the points on that discussion. So good, good stuff. Um, this morning, we started with 2510. Can you do that first? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, so we started, started out talking a little bit about what was the vision for this organization moving forward, right? And uh, so Matthew sort of said, well, one way to start that is if this organization was wildly successful, what would that what would that look like in the future? We got some things down for, for what that looks like, high level and some low level needs to be sorted out, right? Then we took that from that, we went to the 2510. 
No, no, we did uh, yeah, road, 25 10. Yeah, 25, so, so 25 10, we said, okay, if we were 10 times bolder, what kind of things would we do, right? To get some breakthrough thinking going. So that was a, a good exercise. Um, we then um, switched over to trying to improve uh, your conference next year, BJ. So, um, so we actually did you know a lot of your work for you, or at least Ken, you know, drove us through a lot of that work. We did some roses and onions on what was good or bad about either this conference or current conference formats. So we got that information to feed forward to you. And then we did uh, some brainstorming on some design work for what that um, conference might look like. I don't know, um, you wanna just kind of zoom in a little bit on, so we, we, we got you a couple flip charts, BJ. We're not gonna go through the details, but- uh, That's we fine. You, we got you a little bit of a start there, okay? Um, and then, uh, so we did that, and then we just did, finished a little session where we tried to make um, some more progress on the four areas that we identified yesterday morning and identified some first steps on some critical issues that, that this group was, was dealing with, okay? So that's about sort of where we are. I see, Lori, I think uh, you were able to sort of break away from whatever you were doing. You were, we're, you were here with us yesterday. Um, so any uh, any feedback from the online folks? Uh, the, the one observation I would make, and this relates to next year, is hands-on. You know, hands our, our, you know what we need to be, you know, as we, you know, as we think about who we want to try to bring in, um, you know, again, you know, it, you know, academia, Eric, you know, there are too, too many conferences. There's a lot of... Uh, we talk a lot, we present a lot. Uh, th this needs to be very hands-on. Uh, what we need to be doing is giving people some guidance in terms of what is out there, what has worked, uh, you know, inspiring people, motivating people as to why uh, they might want to keep this thing going. Okay, excellent. Yeah, good, good advice. Thank you for that, BJ. Uh, Lori, do you have any comments or is your microphone hi. working? Can you hear me? We can hear you. Go for it. Oh, hi, everyone. Sorry I missed today. Um, just wanted to say, uh, really, I couldn't hear too much about uh, the, the things that you were discussing, but I will say upon reflection from yesterday that the shift and share was my favorite part. Um, <laughs> I thought that um, having some kind of blend at, the, at next year's summit between learning and learning from each other is a really kind of a good uh, framework for that time spent together. So I really loved hearing from my colleagues um, some of the things they wanted to share. So having some kind of shift and share would be, I think, very powerful. Yeah, good. Thank you, Lori. Excellent uh, feed uh, feed forward, hopefully, to next year's conference. Any, uh, any comments or things that people want to say? Are we recording yeah. this? Okay, so we're recording. So now you get to be recorded. And your, your last uh, comments on this, we're gonna, we're gonna post this on our website. We're gonna you know, share it, push share it with everybody. Or push those, I don't know. <laughs> whatever that thing was about national organizing, you know, we're gonna do that to whatever it is we say. Any, uh, any other comments from folks? All right, so uh, so let's go ahead and close down the report out for now. Thank you for joining us online. Thank you guys for sticking through the report out, and we're going to go ahead and switch over to lunch mode. Is that good for everybody? Yeah. So coming back from lunch, um, we'll uh, we'll sort of talk and reconnoiter during lunch, and sort of figure out what we're going to do post lunch that would be uh, useful for you guys. Okay. All right, so um, lunch, and we're going to do lunch is now. Let, let, let's say we're just going to do an hour. So let's come back. Um, uh, so uh, so one one ten. So one ten, we'll come back and sort of you know try to wrap things up a little bit. Okay, so one ten.